I want to work on the oceans. So, all right, so do your studies. Do your studies. When we came and sat and we'd be like, okay, let's, what are we going to work on today? You know, we would sit on this step here and look at the wall and talk about what area we would focus on. And then I would say, well, you know, I think this might work better over here instead of here. And <clears throat> he'd have to convince me a couple times, I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, uh, but, but it worked out, you know, and, and, and it was, the water was a big part of that and the flow of it. And there was so much. Not everything is on the same plane and not everything is looking at, at every sing, same area. Like we try to angle each person. So we're, no matter where you're at in the mural, someone's gonna be, hey, looking out for you. It's bringing you into that area. And then we put in Pablita Velarde's uh, like elements that were, um, <clears throat> they were inspired by her book, uh, stories that my grandfather told me. And she had the origin story on the cover of the book where people are doing their uh, creation story. They're, they're walking and it's the stories of that. <clears throat> so. It really does go back far in time, but, um, but also looking to the future, I think that's, um, I think that's, you know, if when you're going somewhere, you got to know where you come from. And I think that's important. There's lots of circles and there's, there's a few center points with the horizon line from Pablita Velarde's flower. In the center of her flower, there's radiating angles coming out. So there's triangles, pyramids, like you're saying, there's lots of shapes, as well as from Spider Woman's dress, from the center of that, there's also angles that are radiating, radiating out of that. So there's a, there's a diamond right in the center that is always gonna be bringing your eye. So you could literally take, you could take rulers and see how carefully that we executed this so that it, it was flawless. And I think we had the challenge of not being able to walk back in a mural and that was the difficult challenge was not being able to walk 30 feet and really get the perspective and idea of what an artist needs for that size of scale um, so we had to use we had to we had to get you know get our math our math out and thanks to Colleen and, and myself we really <laughs> took time to make sure that it flowed so perfectly even down to the the shape of the hummingbird so all the angles there's lots of angles that are leading the eye up and down and around and over through the ocean waves and through the crystals so everything was there um, not by chance including the hummingbird um, the roundness of it it also coincides with the first circle around Pablito Velarde this circle again flowers so everything is radiating around itself so we really took time to make sure that we could tell so much of a story in four years we kept oh, we should put this person in. And I would always say, no, damn it, like, no. Like, I, and then so, because it was a matter of where are we going to sit them to where they look natural in the sense that they looked at ease, that we didn't Photoshop them. And every source came from somewhere different. So in order for me to put, you know, this next to that person and for Colleen to say, well, let's put Grandma Brown and these kids here. It was, it was all the, it was many conversations to say, how is it going to work logistically? And I think, thank you very much. Like we we were happy with the overall result. I, I think because it flows and it's a hard area and it's, but it's a weird area. The neighbor, Al, his name was Al, who used to live here. He rest in peace. He passed, oh, but yeah, yes. good people. Oh. He brought a lot of humor and love and, and he looked after this mural like it was his own and he called it his own. Yeah. And one day he, he said, hey, come here, I want to show you something. So he went into his living room and we got to see the view that he sees. And it was only maybe six feet further back in the space where we could see. And it was, it was the moon and the mountains and it was, it was an entire... I said, Al, we just added like 40 miles to your view. <laughs> like we, like you, I do not have a blank wall in front of you. And he laughed. And so it was just really cool. Like I think that part of it was... There was a lot of there was a lot of humor and a lot of love, but also a lot of math and yes. how we've connected it all was also another part of the magic was understanding how the, all of these timelines um, coincide. And I think that was the cool thing was knowing that there are stories that are, were carried deep within us and then all the way up to you know current modern day history, even down to like having 
having people that are alive or were alive very recently. <laughs> so I think that's, that's a pretty cool thing, yeah. Going into the past, I found out too that when the Navajos did the long walk, there was actually 54 of them. That when they crossed the river, they were likely crossing the river. That was one of the points that they crossed the river. Um, <clears throat> so to me, that, that's part of that connection with my history as a Navajo, as Diné. Um, and that's why I did the studies of the children at the long walk and also included my great-grandmother, Mary Brown, in this. Um, Ehazba is her Indian name. That's her over here uh, in front of the fire, tending the fire, uh, because her grandmother, um, or her, sorry, her mom walked back from the long walk when she was four. So these are actual studies of children who, of photographs that I did of children who were at Fort Sumner and were birthed from that. And to me, that was kind of about survival, being able to overcome things. She, she was really powerful and strong, um, and she lived to be about 100 and, um, well, no one really knew. So I've heard the age range of between 108 to 113 years old. That's whole, how old she was when she passed, and I was 16 years old when when she passed it's it's so. a it's a cool space and i think knowing all the history that happened here good and also terrible and horrible um there's a lot of healing in this and it's a it's a counterculture against all the other everything else that's happening so i think it's good <laughs> general yeah. fierce woman she was one of the original three that was Maya. yeah <laughs> one person that stood out to me that is local here is um, is Adela Martinez and and she's the woman that has a number two on her arm that's looking fierce with glasses um, we chose her specifically because she has history to Barelas including a stone's throw away from this mural um, is her home and and her family resides there and I th we think that we um, wanted to represent her in that in a portrait to honor the historic things that she's done for this area, um, including resiliency and including understanding what it is to have a home and to understand that. Colleen touched on that earlier. Where are you from versus where are you now? Um, and I think her statement of what her home meant to her here was larger than life. And I think it's a definitely a big lesson and value that we should take on. So her portrait is really awesome. And I think it was very special that we put her in. We chose it from a photo. There was a few photographs of her in one photograph she was uh, facing off against, I think, police, mounted police. <laughs> and then another photograph, she was also there. But it was also an encounter. In other words, her portraits were coming from an encounter of people trying to take her out of her home, trying to expel, trying to, trying to eliminate that narrative. And she said, hell no, you know, over my dead body. And I think that is, that needs to be that, that the type of... Center, yeah, where the, the cultural National center Hispanic is. Yeah, National Hispanic Culture. Yeah, so, her house so, is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, uh, so a museum there. to preserve a history of people to it just it's backwards so I think we I love that her home is still there it's a testament to to resiliency in our nature and she needs to be recognized in this area especially if, her, if she's here and her family you know give props and respect mm -hmm. we even painted her in the other mural that we completed on Hazel Dean the second is we point we painted a portrait of her but it was a portrait of her home so you can also go see her house because that is also a portrait of that person and I think that's, that's one person that definitely um, gives me fire as, as a person, as an artist and learning my culture. And also uh, Maria Martinez, the woman, the woman holding the pot with the water coming out of it. Um, for me, I, I, I study hands and, and people's faces and I think hands are the same way as if you're looking at someone's face. You can tell what they do, how they are, who they are, I think. And um, painting her hands really, really was, uh, an experience, not only just the technical proportions of trying to make it look, um, but also it just, they're very warm hands and it made me think of all the ancestors and the women that I have in my own life. It reminded me of my own grandma's hands. So it just, it was a beautiful experience to understand that and to try to do my best job representing these people and their legacies and their history towards that. That's Spider Woman and her manifestation on earth and weaving time. <laughs>
And I did that also to kind of uh, remember where I came from too with my uncle, um, Uncle RC and stuff. Spider Woman um, is one of, for Diné, it's one of our uh, Diyan Diné, the holy people. And she's in our creation stories and interacts with the, the twins uh, the hero twins in our stories, Nayet and Isrena del Tobajishchin, um, Monster Slayer and um, Child Born for Water. And I also think of her as the weaver of time. <laughs> um, and so she's the only person in this mural who's not flesh colored. That's because she's spirit. Uh, and uh, her manifestation on Earth is actually, I put her out of that cave at the end as a tarantula <laughs> because uh, the month of October the 13th moon is when um, the tarantulas come out and <clears throat> so it's it's all kind of what connected. do you think um, the Gormans would say about this painting um, Carl and RC oh I I, I think they would like it. Um, I think, you know, they'd probably find something funny to tease me about. <laughs> like, <such laughs> because as. they're jovial people. They were happy people. And, um, you know, they, they were, I remember when I was <coughs> interviewing Carl, just looking at some really funny cartoons about RC's work. <laughs> so I think they, that humor, you know, that helps. Uh, that's something that has helped Navajos in general to also, you know, that Indian humor helps to deal with the challenges of living in society and life today and the hardships that life brings. <laughs> and so sometimes all you can do is laugh at yourself and, um, or, uh, and not take yourself too seriously. At some point in time, we also changed this narrative. Like this also had other stories on this as well. And I think that's the cool part about it is that there's different stories. Again, it's a, your timeline. It depends on how you're identifying what's happening and who your timeline is. That's, that's the main thing. I love all the timelines that are happening in this because it, it opens up the option of the future as well. Like, I think that's the cool part about it. That's how I see it. And so I learned a lot in this process, I think, and I just have always loved to learn and sharing that love of learning, I think is really important. And I hope that this sparks curiosity in people to learn and know about the history and, uh, of, of New Mexico because it's an amazing place. And even, <clears throat> I would even go so far as to say that Mexico should be New Mexico because the Mexica people are Uto Aztecan people and they came from here. They came from the Utah area, from the Four Corners area. And their stories are very similar to the stories down here, and they have a migration story that comes from here. And so the Pueblos here, they were here, you know. So um, that's, anyways, that's, those are my thoughts. <laughs> it was a large process. Yeah. Years, it took years. And I think that's the cool thing is it it's still, it's still in process. <laughs> have, have you ever worked on a mural that um, has been that engaging to you as an artist over such a long period of time? Um, I can't say I've been on a mural, another mural project that was four years long plus. <laughs> no, this has been probably, and I think this was probably, this is probably like my biggest project undertaking for like how I had to approach it in my own, in my own experience. So it was, um, it was good. And, and I think that's why it was working at it in such a careful way. I think that was cool. And I had set the intention out for myself to want to paint murals because I saw the impact and power of them. Um, years and years and years before, I just set it out like, oh, I want to paint a mural. And it's really cool how things come to fruition if you're really on a good path and setting that up for yourself. And I figured out that I like doing this style. You know, it's not going to look the same for everybody. So I think that was special for me to find that and find other people that were dedicated like that.